I've got a compressor here that is stock and it's from 2001, but because it is a ice cream machine, we are going to replace it. Not to mention the availability of the machines are near impossible to get. We've got it recovered. We're gonna go ahead and purge some nitrogen through it and we're gonna get this thing unbrazed. We've got a new compressor over here, ready to go. The new one comes with a hard start kit and everything we need, which we're gonna mount that in its own special little box here because the way they invented this here was absolutely asinine. The crap comes right down because people don't maintain the machine properly. The mix will overflow, come into here, trail right down into your electrical uh, compartment here and we'll get into your contactors and all your other stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the hard start stuff in its own box off to the side there just to make it a little easier. It's one of the times where it just is nice to have this little box and as much as this thing gets rapid cycled you're going to want that we're also going to try out the new navac 4 cfm cordless pump we're going to be doing that here in just a little bit we're not going to do a full-blown showing you embracing and all that stuff because that's brain dead we've already done did that a million times but we're just going to do some highlights here and kind of see what we got going on we're going to get a new uh, contactor in there new filter dryer and that's about it and then we'll be back up and running uh, because uh, they really use this machine a lot. Okay, I think it's that cut out. We're gonna have to trim that plastic out for it to fit in there because that's not going to fit and they don't have anything underneath there for that to plug into. So we'll trim that out just a touch hook these up we'll run uh, we'll use these wires right here to run a l1 and l2 over to here and we'll connect that to the common right there should be the run so there's red so we'll connect to the capacitor we got her all wound up so she isn't getting into anything use the milwaukee tool there to trim that out that should fit right in there now not going to go anywhere. Just pop those feet on it and get this thing mounted up. I did go and drop the oil out of the other one to make sure the oil was actually in it because this other compressor that I had had seized up so I was making sure that uh, the oil wasn't trapped in the barrel or something like that. Uh, these do rapid cycle a lot. I did go ahead and clean up my filter dryer area there so when I unsweat it to get it out of there. <gasps> Unsweat it? Yeah, I'm gonna unsweat it because I don't have a crap ton of freaking room. I mean, granted, we're gonna be fighting some goobers there and stuff like that, but we will make it happen. And they ran a 5 8 if you're lucky, and two, it looks like a 7 8 maybe it's 3 quarter. I think it's a few different fittings here so we can get it adapted, it looks like. Yeah. So that one there will adapt to it right there, and then I think that right there will fit into that piece right there, which is great. I was able to put the run and common right on those spots, nice and tight, right on through the Romex connector. So we got a couple of them mounted there. So here's my adapters. This is a half inch. So we're going to put that there like that. This is going to bend down to there. That there is going to fit in there like that. We'll raise that shut and then we'll add it to here. Get this thing into place and then we can start getting an evacuation going on it while we're finished wiring it up. Just got to raise that shut, raise that. Heat this up, let it drop into its pocket. It'll be good to go there. Going to unhook this, slide a new stem in there. That way it's uh, good to go. And then add a stem also to this point right there. I'm trying to keep everything closed up until I'm ready to get busy. My very last thing I'll be doing is my filter dryer. That way you're keeping all your capabilities of keeping the moisture out to the minimum. Got uh, that undone. Getting ready to burn that one in. Got the uh, filter dryer out. Just got to get that into place yet. And for the nitrogen police. I do have the nitrogen there. I purge through. Have, you know, you can only do so much when on certain parts there, but... We're getting it with good practices as best as possible. We're going to purge anything that's left in there and then get her permanently braised in there. 
So I had some problems trying to get that in there, which is why I hate reusing anything It's braised because you got to heat up your base metal down here on the filter dryer. You got to try to get it in there, and then the last yin yang didn't freaking cut it off square. It's oval shaped. It's not going in there, say the least. Uh, this piece back here broke off. This one here, as I'm trying to pull it apart, snapped apart. We just redid it all. We're doing with a 3 8 T here with a piece of 3 8 for the sleeve. We're a bushing and it's going over to that piece there. We're going to go ahead and perch some nitrogen through there and then uh, brace that thing up. And then we can probably start pulling vacuum here real soon. All right, another shameless ploy here for refrigeration technologies. Never used this stuff before either. John sent this to me, wanted to try it out. I've tried the other stuff too that does fairly good too. But what I noticed about this is it's really formable and it's easy to form. Now let's see if it actually uh, is worth a squat when I'm done. Make sure you know that it don't take off the paint. Let's go ahead and burn this thing in and see what we get. All right, so it held up pretty good. It's a little, little uh, blackened there, but I think I can pick that out of it. But it seems like it did a pretty good job. It protected everything. It uh, never got really hot down here. Cooled this section down just a little bit so I could inspect it. And it looks like everything pretty much went in there pretty good. It seems like it's still pliable, which is good. And uh, that's, that's what I was looking for, something I can still reuse and throw it back in there. I'm pretty impressed. That was definitely easier for me to um, form it to get it on there. Usually I can't, can't get it in there. Uh, with some of the other brands, I mean, I'm not saying the other ones aren't good. I'm just saying that they don't form very good and usually filter dryers I just go ahead and burn some of it because it's such a pain in the butt to try to get it to form around it. Cleaned up. Um, there's a little bit of damage there but I did not put it on very thick because you've got to be able to get heat onto the base metal there to pull it into the socket. As you can see I got from here to there and uh, it seems like it pulled in pretty good. So you're going to have a little bit there no matter what and it's inside so it's not exposed to the elements. It looks pretty good. We did our pressure test here, found one little leaf there, there's some silver solder on there from the last uh, repair, I had to reuse that little piece of copper there. Heated it up, added some new uh, rod to it, and everything's looking good. We're going to go ahead and get this thing vacuuming out, so we're going to get the NAVAC for CFM via uh, vacuum pump out. We're just going to pull off this thing with the uh, blue hoses. I'm going to put my micron gauge here on the high side, and we're going to put the hose there on the suction and pull this thing down. We got the 4CFM vacuum pump here. It comes in a nice little gym bag looking thing here. It's got a shoulder strap. Got the Velcro strap here at the top. Gives you a lot of room in there. There's a charger that would normally go in there, but I haven't been carrying it in there. So let's get our battery on here and see how this thing does. This will be my first pull down on a live unit. Granted, it's new uh, oil and stuff uh, in the compressor, so it's not gonna be bad. Uh, we've got brand new oil there. I've already done a test on this pump when I first got it and it pulled down I think 10 microns. We have the 9 amp hour battery just hooks right on the back. Boom! Just like that. It's got a half inch. This is something the 2CFM did not have. It also has the ball valve there that the 2CFM did not have. It also has a gas ballast on the side that the 2CFM did not have. And it has an eyelet here. So it's got some extra goodies on it to make your job a little bit easier, to make your oil last longer. We're gonna go ahead and get our big blue hose hooked up here on the half inch. We're gonna pull on this suction side here and we're gonna measure our microns over there. All right, let's go ahead and start the stopwatch. We'll turn this thing on. Super, super quiet. The exhaust actually comes out through this little handle piece right here, which is kind of interesting. Let's we'll start to see and here we are starting to come up to speed. I'll go ahead and start my gas ballast open. There it goes. Now I do have a place to plug in available. I want to see what this thing can do. And they say you can get quite a few evacuations off that one battery. Kind of get you a little look at this thing. It's got a plastic bottom on it underneath there. Underneath there the electronics are in there so you do not want to set this into uh, deep muddy water or anything like that or you're going to fry it. Other than that, I mean, you've got your oil fill right here on top and your oil drain right here on the front, which is pretty simple. She does get a little bit warm after it runs for a while, but look what we are already. We are already at 4,000 microns. We're at a minute and 40 seconds, which I would say a minute and a half of that was actually some of it. This is a 12,000 uh, BTU compressor, so it's not a little toy. 
for being a small appliance, but you can see the leak rate, how fast we're actually removing the uh, air from inside there, or the pressure from inside. You had to double the CFM of what they had before, at four now instead of two, which even the two did good from what I've been told. But the key to everything right here is the big hose. Having that half inch hose right there is, I think, key. Uh, you also have your quarter and three eighths, so you can get both sets of hoses on there. But I, uh, I'm pretty impressed so far. We're really hauling it down. And you gotta remember, we're pulling through the suction side here on the compressor, so we're getting the whole case. We're having to pull backwards. When you're pressurizing a system, you can actually bleed through the suction side and go through the compressor. It'll kind of like go right on through because the valve is pushing down through it and coming on out. So when you're pulling a vacuum, it's not going to allow it. So what we're seeing there is actually coming back through the TXV and everything else. So we're getting a true sense of what's going on. We're at 3 minutes 30 seconds. I would say more close to 3. And we're already at 1100. So wow, that is pretty impressive. So the battery life, it's not gonna take a lot. I've never timed it and let it run nonstop, but I've heard somewhere around an hour is what they, they have. If not, leave it down below. And if I find out that I'm wrong, I'll leave that down below also. 0 0.5, 0 0.4. Guys, you can pick this Navac vacuum pump up at uh, True Tech Tools. Use discount code SURVIVAL for 8% off. Uh, put that in at checkout. I'll put a link down below also for the Navac tool along with some of my other favorites. We are now at 800 microns at 4.5 minutes. Not bad when you're pulling against the compressor oil and everything else. Which, you know, it was open for just a short period of time, so you're going to absorb a little bit of moisture, but so far so good. I'm going to go ahead and get started on my electrical over there. This is kind of short, so I'm not sure. I may have to mount it over here, which will make it easier uh, for me to work on it in the future. It'll also allow me to keep that out of any drippage because you've got the rear of the barrel here, which if it leaks, it comes down, gets onto this plate right here, and then goes on through. We do have a side glass, which you can see is already pretty green. It was uh, starting to get a little yellow from being open for a while, but at five minutes, we are at 700 microns. Not bad, and only pulling with one hose. You would have never gotten that out of your quarter inch hoses. No way. So we're kind of stalling out here at 20 minutes. We've been under 500 for a while. Let's go ahead and kind of get that air bubble out from underneath that ball and uh, see if this thing will hold. You can see it already had a little bit of a effect on that. Come on, baby, keep dropping on down there for me. You got your power coming in here, L1, L2, loops up, comes to the bottom of the contactor. It parallels off to the drive contactor. This is for the drive motor, mixes everything. Common coming off of uh, L1 to one common side of the 230 volt coil. Same thing with this one right here. You got the top here being fed to the compressor, which goes down and over to there. We went through this uh, little spot there, which will be good. That's gonna keep all this crap from uh, getting screwed up when mix drops down from above. Uh, getting rid of the other contactor. We're using 40 amp contactors here because they're heavier duty. This thing will rapid cycle uh, over the year. It may cycle up to 50 some thousand times. You gotta use the heavier contactors and these are rated for 40 amps. So we got that. We did a valve off test here. And you gotta remember, they're about 680. We're holding at 0.7, so it's slowed down. You've got refrigerant in here, you've got refrigerant in the evaporator. We're not going to get a perfect uh, vacuum with this right now, but I know that we are not moist. I know our moisture indicator looks good. I'm not going to spend an indefinite amount of time here to get to it. If I was probably that digital deal, it would have probably passed it. We're pretty good here. I'm going to put something to help uh, isolate that from the metal from vibrating. Otherwise, we'll strap up our wires here and get this thing charged up. Okay, you're probably wondering how I did it, so without the bow there. So I'm just putting a little bit of liquid in there, a couple ounces. We're going to let it boil off. The pressure's coming up. As soon as we're in a positive there, we're going to take that off and finish charging the rest end liquid through the discharge line. Switched it over. Now we're charging through the discharge line. This holds 27 ounces. That was with the 083, but I only had a 163 dryer, so we're going to... Uh, have to add probably about two ounces to an ounce and a half for the dryer, not a humongo deal. Everything's looking pretty good. Nice green sight glass there. So just about there. That would be one pound, 11 ounces. We're at one pound, 13, so I have two extra ounces there. Just 
just uh, got to get our panels back on. Got to finish uh, securing a few things here yet. We got that mounted down. Got tape on those. That's not even touching now. It's lifted up off of that once I got that in place. Just need to uh, get some mix in this thing and see if she makes a milkshake. We got her filled up. Let's go ahead and plug this thing in and see if she throws sparks. Turn away. Oh, there's that. All right. Put this thing on. She freeze. Well, she run. She just came on. Good deal. She's a pumping. Side glass is staying full. Head pressure should stay somewhere fairly close. I think the water's still on. Ah. Head pressure seems a little high. Are we not getting rid of that? Boy, that, that valve ain't doing so good, is it? She's getting her up there 150-ish, 250-ish. It's 105. She might be slow to respond. Usually about 235, so it's coming back down. That's good. Got a little bit of flash in there, so we may need to give it a little squirt. That don't seem accurate. What's going on? Oh, there we go. There we go. Boy, you want to talk about scaring the crap out of you. Okay, there we go. This actually looks a little bit better. Run about 100 degrees. Uh, not so bad there on that. Looks like we're fairly fluid. We got a little bit of a bubble there. I'm going to give her a couple extra ounces. You shouldn't charge by the sight glass, but like I said, since I ran a little bit bigger filter dryer in there, I'm going to give it a little squirt or two extra just in case. Get nice warm there. I go out and grab some uh, wrap insulation for that real quick. So far we're looking pretty good. Run right in there about zero. Not too bad. Just added, uh, looks like I added about four ounces over total than what the original factory was. This machine is uh, 20, 21 years old. It uh, was probably due to be replaced, but machines aren't available, so we just had to make it work. Got that wrapped up. Wire tie helped hold that, support it so there's no vibration, which we're kind of, I always like to see my loop more towards where the brace point is. It just tends to vibrate less. Seems like when it's in the middle, it tends to vibrate more because it's just out there swanging. She just satisfied. We were running uh, 235. Sweetness. Going to go ahead and uh, disconnect and uh, double check our product here real quick. Now it's a milkshake. So, there you go works might need to adjust it a little more but for right now it's working so that one's done well guys that's gonna wrap that one up pretty much uh, wanted to show off the vacuum pump and what it can do you know instances like that where they've got refrigerant in the uh, oils and things when I pulled that oil out of the compressor that was in there there was still quite a bit of refrigerant trapped in it and you know it, it actually foamed over the cup when I poured it into it so that that refrigerant gets trapped in that oil and it does not come out right away and the same thing can happen with the you know anything else far as you know in the barrel and things like that you'll have oil trapped in that and it just doesn't let it up and all you're doing is you're getting boiling off now there's also the chance too that your Valcor tool is not holding I've got a uh, chamber that I built to pull against and I don't care whether they're vacuum rated. They're vacuum rated when they're brand new, not when they've been used 50 times and they wear out. And you can rebuild some of them, but I've had them still leak. So, you know, I don't have a lot of faith in some of these valve core tools and I don't really care who makes it. CND's been the best one for me. Uh, I've tried the other big names and stuff and I just really like the CND. That's what they were using at the Stolding factory. Figured if it's good enough for the people making the machine that I work on all the time, it's good enough for me. So. I've tried all the other ones, not saying one way or the other on either one. Anyhow, that thing's running good, made a milkshake, great. You know, the machine's old, it's wore out. I did clean it up, made it look as good as possible. Uh, put that oversized dryer in there, not really because I wanted to, but because I didn't have anything else to use. And uh, everything worked out good for it. That's just a quick video. Just thought I'd give you a rundown of the uh, 4CFM Navac vacuum pump. And uh, as always, you got to use the right size hose if you're wanting to see any progress in that. Once again, guys, don't forget. I, yeah. Once again, guys, don't forget the promo code 
survival at True Tech Tools. True Tech Tools is partnering with me on a lot of different uh, ventures here, showing off the tools and stuff that they have to offer. And uh, so I'm throwing love back their way. So make sure you use that code. And until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.